<laughs> yo, yo. What's going on? I'm going hat like today because I'm letting my hair grow out a little. You guys like it? <laughs> What's going on? How my people at? Who my people at? If I could turn back down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Randall. How you doing, Mark? What's up, baby? Where else? Hey, who's got that echo on? I hear it. Good, 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 good. And Nick, I think you got your uh, speaker on. Man, you guys should have seen it. I was rocking a straight porno stash for the last couple of weeks. I was killing it. Literally. <laughs> hey, Gary, from Maui. Man, it's got to be late over there, huh? Midnight? Oh, it was Rolly Fingers times 10. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> it was so epic. I had to take it out. I So I actually shaved it for this webinar because <laughs> it's my business partner's like, who's going to trust a man with a mustache? But now I feel like I know you guys. <laughs> we can roll. We can roll straight up with a mustache. Oh, yeah, 3 p.m. You're behind. Hey, Marvin, do you ever run into, uh, you know, my best friend Cameron Fusu's a day trader. He's in Cape Town. You should um, hit him up. He'll probably let you cruise over and watch him trade and stuff. He's a good, good dude like that. You just tell him I sent you. Yeah, he's cool. I think he's in, uh, I forgot, one of those little beach towns in Cape Town. I mean, there's only a Clifton Beach, maybe, Clifton, something like that. Hey, Eric, how you doing, buddy? I, mean, I haven't broken this hat, and so I've been wearing the same Bulls hat for a couple of years. But I got a fresh one for today. Good, Marv. All right, cool. Everybody ready to learn? Uh, can I get that? Oh, I got it, Nick. Cool, thank you. You the man, bro. So, guys, um, on the mic will be Big Nick. He'll be answering questions. Uh, you may also hear from Omar while this thing is going on so if you have any technical difficulties you just need something you want to chat about something you let the guys know i'll make sure of course to answer everybody's i'll make sure to answer everybody's questions at the end and we'll get this party going i really appreciate you guys coming in i had a fun time yesterday i hope you guys did too because today's gonna be more funner is that even a word I'm just messing. Today's got to be fun. All right? Sweet. Staten Island in the house. Jersey Shore in the house. Cool. Guys, let's get to work. We'll chit-chat later. We'll do what we got to do. We'll have a little bit of fun. And you know how the rest comes. All right? Man, I love Savannah, Georgia. Casey, you got any cute friends over there? Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, and Nashville got the cutest girls. I'm a single man. Looking for love, a notebook type of love. <laughs> Sweet. All right, cool. Let's get this going. Hold on here. Let me just close a couple of these windows. I got so many little TC2000 little layout groups and stuff like that. Close these bad boys Yeah. It's the old school one. Sweet. Hold on here one second. Ladies and gents, cool. Let's get work. So I apologize about that. I got four monitors and just like a million just random stuff going on all the time. So today's agenda. We're going to talk about an advanced strategy that I use quite often. Um, one of the things you'll notice about day trading in general. So like I have a bunch of different patterns that I trade. I literally trade most of them every single day. They show up, we build scans so that we can find them, right? Like technology so you can find your patterns. And then it's a matter of, right, monitoring and then striking when you see it. Now, of course, 
when you're actually doing it, <laughs> it feels a lot different because if any of you guys have traded before, you get those sweaty fingers. Derek, man, you got to come over to my place. I'm not that far from you, by the way. Um, I'm on Scenic Gulf Drive. Hit me up, 517-974-1480. We'll grab some beers if you want. How to define your risk for match reward, real trade, examples, live Q&A at the end. All right, so stick around to the end. We'll give a special offer for everybody who signed up uh, throughout this webinar. I'll throw out a few things, some questions, some trading things to see if you guys have been paying attention. I'll send you guys some hats. I got all sorts of cool bulls hats. Let me just, now I got hats galore. I got originals. I mean, I got yellow snapbacks. Anything you can think of, I got. So we'll do a couple things. Make sure that you guys have a little swag and we'll get this thing going. Uh, offer for everyone who signed up for the course as usual. And I know a lot of you guys, there's probably about 10 of you guys from yesterday's class that are coming into January 29th, 60 day boot camp. Um, only four of you guys sent me a message on TC2000 um, to get the layouts. So on TC2000, you got to hit me and I'll get you the layouts. I only got a few of you guys sent me the layouts. Remember, if you want my scans, you want my layouts from TC2000, you're coming to next week's class. Uh, just put in your email, phone number for um, Nick and he'll get it for you guys. So just a, a recharge from yesterday because I know a lot of you guys are brand new, right? I'm Canal. I'm the hyperactive CEO of this company. I've been trading stocks now professionally for 10 years. And I spent literally years before that trying to figure out how to trade like probably so many of you guys. I crept around. I've creeped. I've crept around in chat rooms message boards, read newspapers, books, got tips from really shady friends, anything you could think of to try to figure out stock trading, but it just never worked. It was probably about 2006 when I met my mentor, Paul Singh, who works for us now. And, you know, he was able to help me put it together. And, you know, a couple of years later, I was able to become a full-time trader and leave my job in Detroit, Michigan. And, um, you know, I spent the next four or five years just traveling around the world, living in different places. Um, anywhere from, so I, I lived in Bali for a couple months, Hawaii, um, me and my friends. So like these guys answering the questions here, my boys, um, I've known them since I was eight years old. You know, we spent six months living in Costa Rica. Uh, the works, you know, once you got it down, it's fun to get it down. Now I'm kind of more of a homebody. Uh, I'm tired of traveling. You know, funny part is everybody's like, oh man, traveling's so fun. I'm like, yeah, it's really fun. Except, you know, the internet always stinks and the food's always suspect and, you know, pretty much everywhere you go gives you diarrhea. But <laughs> other, other than that, it's amazing, right? So I've been hanging out at the house the last few months working on some things, but uh, it's been an incredible ride. I've literally been a speaker at events all over the world from Asia to London, South America, and then, you know, any spot in the U.S. you can think of that's got a dirty hotel room where people are smoking cigarettes and they want to learn about stocks, I'm there. I'm just kidding. That's the old school way, right? When I went to my first stock conference, they allowed people to smoke cigarettes. So they lined up these tables in a hotel, you know, and because they'd always rent a hotel, it'd be like a Holiday Inn or whatever, Double Tree. They have like rows of ashtrays. <laughs> People be smoking cigarettes, listening to, you know, the presentation for Primerica, Amway, you know, <laughs> whatever it was at the time. I've been to all of them trying to find out how to get into business. I've literally taught guys, thousands of students over the years, how to do this thing. And, you know, I, we're going to learn a little bit more about my style and some of the patterns I trade. You know, I use a very cool momentum-based trading style that is, I think, the best way to grow accounts for growth, but also to take income. It doesn't require any gimmicks like penny stocks, small cap stocks, low float stocks. Those are all just taglines or marketing ploys 
for really suspect snake oil salesmen to get your money because everybody is going to convince you, right? There's a, every day there's a dollar stock that goes to two. Not the case. If you look at majority of studies, I've traded small cap stocks my whole life. Every day when a dollar stock moves, 90% of them go to 50 cents and one of them goes up 10, 20 cents. All right? That's always just the nature of the game. Stocks are a dollar for a reason. They stink. So I'm going to talk today about a really cool uh, indicator that I use to help me time trades and get into trades in, that you can get into a numerous different way. So we call this the VWAP. And so the VWAP is an indicator that means volume weighted average price. I know this is going to be a little bit over some of your guys' heads and that's totally cool. I'll make sure to you know answer questions at the end and you know, we'll do our thing. But what volume weighted at price average? Does anybody know what that even means? It's a mouthful, ain't it? <laughs> Good. Good, Ryan. Good, Timmy. All right, I'm seeing it. Okay, so what VWAP essentially means is it's the average price of all the buyers and sellers in a particular stock weighted by volume. So how I look at it is it's a line in the sand on a stock. So when you are looking <coughs> at a stock's intraday course, intraday chart, what you'll see is a, a, a line. It's usually pretty stable. doesn't really fart around too much. That line will be the average price of basically all the buyers and sellers weighted by volume. So it's a line in the sand on a particular stock, but it's also a great way to identify a stock's trend. So a lot of you guys um, downloaded your TC2000 yesterday. Remember, they got a free version. So in TC2000 yesterday, we made, write a chart. So oh, that's the wrong chart, right? We made a chart yesterday. So in the chart, that you made yesterday, what I want you guys to do is um, we're gonna add an intraday chart. So like how you do like an intraday chart on TC2000 um, is, you know, you can take any chart. So yesterday, I hopefully you guys, they, um, <laughs> hopefully you guys um, saved your layouts from yesterday, but you know, in TC2000, what you can do is just like open a, and you can open a layout. So like, you know, we did our daily charts yesterday. So like if you saved it, just open up whichever, you know, that daily chart that we made yesterday. Now, how you would add an intraday chart, right? How you would add an intraday chart. So what you would do is hit this chart button, all right? And then take this thing that says blank chart. So now notice how this thing hovers around, right? And if you click this button here, it'll float like to another computer. But what you do is if you click this little cross arrow, now TC2000 opens up. So essentially what you're going to be doing is there's two things. You can tab it, which means you would go back and forth, or you could swap it, or you can stick it on the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. Ooh, sounds kind of dirty, right? <laughs> let's do the right i'm sorry man. it's been a long day so now you got this thing on the right side now what i like to do when i'm trading is i like to have the daily chart on the left the intraday chart on the right so there's like all these different kind of time frames if you click five minutes now you're gonna have a five minute chart and then what you want to do is just kind of change around and edit this stuff so hit edit i know i'm going a little bit fast but um what we want to be doing is always net change for color based. Remember, all this stuff will be recorded. So don't worry about all that. And then everything else stays the same. Now, what we need to do is see like you got all these buttons here. Go to color grid. So I like to always use a gradient color. It's really easy on the eyes. So what you'll do is click the gradient color and you can start choosing around like whatever really kind of fits your eyes. So I like to keep them different colors, but you know, like let's say they're green, right? So now you've got two different types of colors. Everybody following with me so far? 
Just give me a heads up so I know if I'm going the proper speed. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Tammy. Love you guys. My man, Marv. Cool. Dude, I'm a fast talker, so I always got to ask people, like, am I, uh, <laughs> am I okay? You should see me on a date. I'll be like, <laughs> it's be like, uh, what just happened? All right, cool. So I'll leave everything else the same. Now, let's just change, like, um, let's just change the ticker so that we're all, you know, put in like Roku so we can look at it like a real stock. All right. So now you've got your, now you got your intraday chart here. So I want these on five minute candles. Now click this plus button and we're going to add in our moving averages. So type in moving and see how it says moving average exponential. Remember, you can use Finviz, uh, stock charts, and do all this. Um, I just find TSTA the easiest because I personally use it. Why do I personally use it? <laughs> because my mentor told me to use it. <laughs> Nothing too scientific. All right. So exponential moving average. Nine period. Now, I got a good mentor. You guys will have a chance. Probably some of you guys have been to um, Paul's webinars. You know, he works for Ed Bulls now. But, um, boy, a good mentor, they do they do things in such a way that you almost – you trust them so much because they're so good, you just never question. When Paul tells me 2007, I got to get a new charting platform, he says, use this thing called Telechart. Well, I just use it. I know a lot of people have been asking me why I use it. And now I just love it, right? Because it's just, I like the color stuff and, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Blair, we'll talk about that in, uh, at the end, but that's a really good question, by the way. Blair out. Now I need to add a couple more things. From yesterday, remember the moving averages and stuff we added? Intraday, intraday, we're going to use completely different moving averages. So, 9 EMA, I want you to add in. And guys, if you're just using on your broker's charts, that's fine. You can add these in too. Hit moving average exponential again. And now click this and edit it. I want this to be 20. So I want to use a 9 and a 20, guys. Make that like a little purple. And then I want you to add one last one because this is what this class is about. V web indicator right so you got all this kind of stuff i want you to hit this top one i always keep it orange on all your charts like if you can keep your stuff kind of uniform then what will happen is it becomes like second nature right so like when you're trading you're not thinking like is the this one this like i know like when i'm just trading and i have like you know different layouts of charts like you know i'll know like okay like if on this type of chart, like white means VWAP, this means that, you know, so on and so forth. But on this layout, like I always have VWAP as the brown. So it just ends up helping because you can really just kind of layer things out the way that you properly want. I got you, Arabi. 920 EMAs, VWAP, and then just, you know, add in volume. And, you know, kind of keep that small. Just, you know, screen space is everything in trading, right, guys? And it's always interesting. Look how, like, nicely you'll, you'll find nicely, like, different stuff works at different times. Um, like, so, like, in the morning, you're using more 9 EMA. Midday, I use VWAP, so on and so forth. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So, daily chart on the left, intraday chart on the right. We talked about this yesterday. Why do we have two charts up? Why do we have two charts up? Who knows? <clears throat> Why do we have two charts up? Hat, hat to whoever remembers why we keep two charts up. Come on. Ralph, ding, ding, ding. Ralph, you better not be in like Saudi Arabia or some shit. Uh, Nick, remember Ralph, I owe him a hat. Ralph, make sure to give us your address. Good. 
So a couple of you guys got it right. You're all right in your own way, but there's a specific little rant we went on yesterday and why you look at multiple charts. The key to all trading is to align on multiple time frames. To align on multiple time frames. The reason so many day traders fail is because they do not align on multiple time frames. They look at intraday charts and they're like, oh, I'm going to trade this pattern or this pattern. But what they don't realize is there's different things happening on different time frames. And so what will often happen is if you see a good pattern on one time frame, but the other time frame is not matching, they are not aligned. And so your day trade will fail. See, the power of the day trade doesn't come from the day trade chart. It comes from what's happening on the big picture. See, if on the big picture, your daily chart, if I knew, for example, that a stock was going to run for the next month because I'm looking at its larger term trend, <coughs> then what's the best stock to day trade? The best stock to day trade is something I know is about to go up every day for the next month, right? That's what I want to day trade. Then I have two trends that are aligning in a perfect symbiotic relationship, right? Some magic. Like if Celine Dion and Donald Trump had a baby, right? It would be like so weird but amazing. Like you would want to just listen to music and write read tweets all day. That's what we're going for, right? We want to see daily, intraday, marry themselves right into that relationship when one is breaking higher the other's going to break higher but if they both don't then your trade's going to get busted that's why we keep the left and the right on the same chart so we want to always align on multiple time frames ralph you were the first one to get that right i'm proud of you guys and you're right you know the other stuff is true like learning trends and stuff but <laughs> remember what we talked about yesterday your daily chart will give you the idea generation. You use daily chart to figure out what you want to trade. What's your idea, your big picture thesis? Then your intraday chart is what you use to align entries and exits. So I use the big picture to get my idea, the little picture to figure out how to get in and out. And that's how you align them. So like, for example, like something like a Roku, right? We were talking about this yesterday. Right, maybe a potential flag breakout. So when this thing breaks out on the daily, right, that becomes the trade that you want to take intraday, and that's why we align them. So just be kind of mindful of that. Um, let's get back to the VWAP before I start going on a whole different tangent. I keep ad-libbing all these webinars, so my guys make these slides, and I just start <laughs> tossing them out and go with what I think I gotta go with. But I can already see them cringing over there. This is like, I've been on webinar for 12 hours today. So just be mindful of drinking teas and all sorts of stuff to keep it going. So key characteristics of the VWAP. Trending stocks will typically pull back to its VWAP at some point in the trading day. Instead of chasing stops, Stocks, we use the VWAP to get a low risk, high entry, low risk, high reward entry. What we'll usually do is wait for a stock to hold at that level before we enter. So what does that even mean? As that was a mouthful. So what does that even mean? So essentially what that means, man, I don't even know my own path. Let's see if I got my password. Hot damn, look at that. Hopefully my, none of my dirty stuff is on here. <laughs> just kidding. All right, cool. So let's, let's think about this in just logical terms, all right? There's three different parts to the trading day. What are they? Anybody know? Open, middle, close. So the open is 9.30 to... I'm talking Eastern time, 10.30. So it's just your first hour, all right? When you think about trading, certain patterns work 
only during certain times of day. So for example, if you did a flag pattern and you, everybody, does everybody know what a flag is for the most part? Good. Well, like say a flag pattern that, you know, stock that pops up a little bit and then just goes sideways for a little bit, right? And then it breaks. That pattern works really well the first hour of the day, but statistically it works at a negative level mathematically in the middle of the day. Most people don't know that because they can't, right? Nobody talks about that. See, there's so many different patterns in trading, but if you're not using them at the right time and in the right market, they fail. So if any of you guys have ever been in a flag pattern and it's just looked perfect and it gets dudded out, meaning like it's a dud, the reason is that it's not that it's a bad pattern, is that you're using it often at the wrong time, right? And then remember, even with the flag pairing with the nine EMA curls for the girls under. So the middle of the day is gonna be your 10.30 spot to 1 p.m. And then your close is 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., all right? So each part of these days requires like different patterns. So in the morning, right, the open, you know, you use stuff like ORB or a quick pullback buy or red degrees, red degrees. Now, midday is the best spot for VWAPs. You know, if you try to do them like, say, in the morning, the VWAP hasn't caught up yet. But middle of the day, whoa, it works really well. So when you think about VWAP and these characteristics, Remember that the time of day comes into play. This is a midday play. <clears throat> so when we think about VWAPs, I want you to look at it like this, all right? There's different ways to use it. We use it as a bounce point, of course, but we also have, I'll use it as a fade point for potential shorts. So let's take a look. Let me grab you a couple. Sweet. Now I'm just grabbing a couple slides. Good, 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 good. So I use these on these pot stocks. Anybody familiar with pot stocks? Like all the time. The pot stocks seem to really react well to them. So essentially what we want to do, this is how I this is how I run a VWAP trade. All right. So there's four different ways that I would run a VWAP. But the, the most common way is just as a way to time a bounce. So what often happens, if I get a thrust in a particular stock in the morning, you guys see this? When I'm waiting for a pullback, like pullbacks are hard to time, right? Like how do you know where something pulls back to, right? Like it's so confusing. And people often have like just standard answers. Well, if it pulls back to this, you buy it. Well, it, that doesn't really work like that because what if it's just trading is not clean like that. It's like life. It's a little bit messy. But it's not just like exact if you see green light, buy, red light, sell, right? There's a little nuance to it. And that's where the real skill and edge is. So midday, so after 1030, I want to see VWAP type pullbacks if I see a stock that's made of a big run. So you'll see this stock, it goes from 1040 to 1140, right? And then it starts to pull and pull, pull. And what I want to do, because you don't know if they're going to always stop at the VWAP, what will happen is I'm watching it at the VWAP, and when I get a green candle to hold, right? When I get a green candle to hold, that's when I'm taking the trade. Because if I get a green candle to hold on the VWAP, now I know that this trade is for real. So what I'm going to do, and let me just get rid of these lines, I'm going to buy as this candle is holding, right? Then my stop will go right, stop loss will go under the VWAP. Now my first target will be up here. So hypothetically, let's say I'm going to buy, you know, 1,000 shares of this, 1120. My target will be 1170, my first target. My risk would be at what? 
What would be my risk? If I'm buying at 11.20, where would I put my stop loss? Where would I put my stop loss? Hey, thanks, Harry. Appreciate it. Yeah, you can go like 11.10, 11, somewhere in between there. Yeah, 11.10, 11.09. Um, you know, any of those will work. You always want to give it an extra couple pennies, right? So now, so you're going to risk, let's say, 10 cents. You have the potential to make maybe 50 cents, right? So those are that's a good reward to risk. So imagine this, right? No matter what size account you have, right? But if you have, you're going to buy 1,000 shares at $11.20, okay? Your stop loss at $11.09. So your risk is what? $110. Now your potential target, first target is 50 cents away. So your first target, you have potentially $500 that you could take in profit. So that's a good reward to risk, right? That's a, you're always looking for asymmetric reward to risk, right? How can I risk small to make more, right? And that all has to do with entry. If your entry is good, then everything else works in, in, in a symphony. But if your entry is high, then the reward to risk is never there. Is anybody here a chaser? You can raise your hand if you are. I'm a chaser. It's like, you know, telling people you're an AA, right? It's like, hello, I am a chaser, right? Been a chaser my whole life. Chasers are, chasers are just dreamers, that's all. You know, there's nothing wrong with chasing except for the losses and, you know, depression. But when I think of a chaser, somebody that always buys too high, I just think of a dreamer, right? A guy that's looking for the American dream. He sees something going. He wants a piece of it. A chaser's not a dirty thing, but it does cause a lot of losses. We do got to fix it. But if you can time your entries right, you won't have to chase, right? So you always, I always want to sell off half into my first target. And then I'll let the rest ride up its EMAs and see what it can do. All right. So that's like kind of your, you know, quintessential way to do like a VWAP trick. So this is Tilray. Does anyone remember this one? So this stock was running like 10, 15 bucks. It's a pop stock. It ran all the way up to 300. Now, because it's a good company, it's just, it's actually a big turd of a company. But in trading, what makes it amazing is that. The hottest stocks are usually turds. So in the morning, the stock pops up. So notice this gap here. That gap is usually because of like some type of news or something going on in the stock. So the stock fiddles around, right? And there'll be opening morning trades and stuff. Right now we're focusing on the middle of the day. Anytime middle of the day, right? You get that pullback to the VWAP. And I need a candle to hold, right? When I see the green candle to hold, that's what I'm going to buy. I put my stop loss under the VWAP and then give it a little bit extra room, right? So you don't get like wicked out. And now you're off. Now you're off to the races. First target is usually back to the old high. And you don't have to sell into the old high. It's a potential target. If a stock is running hot, you don't just sell it into a target just for the sake of it. You know, let it run hot, right? And see when it starts to fizzle out. So let's get to say you're buying around here at, 136, 137. Your stop loss is going to be at 135. Right? That gives you, and this is a fast moving stock. That's a good reward to risk. If you think you're going to only risk like one or two points on a $130 stock, I mean, that's very little. That's less than 1%. Right? If the stock runs hot, four, five, 10%, 15%, whew, that's a good reward to risk, right? And that's where we want to go with these things. Enbev. So Enbev is another pot stock. This pot stock's really, all, all, all stocks react well to VWAP, but uh, the pot stocks have been in play for lately. So they play, we just trade them a lot. So a lot of my slides are based on that. So you get this stock that gaps up in the morning, pulls back to the 9 EMA, 9 EMA is a good spot, by the way, for uh, bounces. <coughs> good spot for bounces in the morning. But midday, we need that VWAP lifestyle. Guys, VWAP is just a lifestyle, right? 
So this is one of those times like, look, so like, see how this pulled back to the VWAP? I got a green candle to hold. So I ended up buying it in here. And lo and behold, I got stopped out. You know, some seller came in and just kind of whooshed this thing out. And, you know, I ended up taking my loss of 10, 15 cents or whatever it might have been at the time. Now, one of the things that happen is like, you know, sometimes you may get stopped out of the VWAP, but if it remounts back over, like if it was just really quick and it remounts back over, that happens all the time. Remember I told you like nothing in trading is so linear where it's just green light buy, red light sell. Sometimes, look, it could have been at lunchtime and, you know, some jerk was just like, man, I got to go to the bathroom, right? And he just drops 20,000 shares on the market. Well, yeah, you might get stopped out, right? But if it pops back over, that's called a remount. Write this down. A remount after a stop, a, after you've been stopped out, a remount is a confirmation plus a confirmation, essentially. It's like a double confirmation. Because that remount is telling you that the first move, the stop out, was fake or engineered. And now the remount is showing you that the move is on. And so we will re-enter it and get back in with the stop loss under. And I don't mind doing that. Why? Because when I get stopped out of a trade, meaning I take a loss, it's always going to be very small, 1%, right? Or, right? It's going to be very tight because I buy always near support levels or at inflection points in my pattern. So like my losses are never big. So if I get stopped out, all right, I lost 10 cents. It remounts, man, I'm back into this thing, and then I'm playing it back to the upside, right? And then, of course, you know, as always, we'll scale out along the way. But you'll see this sometimes, like anytime a stock breaks below the VWAP and then it remounts back over, you can get some really, really big runs. You know, and sometimes they just hang out. You know, Milton, my friend, I don't trade Forex much. Well, I, I mean, I've traded it, but I don't like to. The issue I have with, you know, Forex in general is that um, it just doesn't have that much movement. Like, you have to, when you're talking, when you have to trade Forex, you have to re rely on, like, huge amounts of margin, right, to just to get going. And I don't know. Something about that just doesn't get me, get me going. So let's talk even about today, right? So this is Roku. So this is the intraday chart for Roku. So what do you notice here? So in the morning, so this stock opens up at 9.30. In the morning, it has a pop, right? Comes back to the 9 EMA and starts to break out. That happens a lot in the morning. The 9 EMA is used for the mornings. VWAP is more midday, right? Now. This thing pops up, starts pulling back to some, some, some ports here, right? Now, it doesn't even pull back to the VWAP. You see that? does not pull back to the VWAP. So I was waiting to buy this thing at the VWAP, but the little sucker refused to pull it back at the VWAP. That's okay. So I didn't get my entry. When you have a hot stock, meaning like a stock that's actually trending intraday, you will often get five, six trades in it throughout the day. Remember, we have three different – oh, Three different parts of the day. You have the open. You have the middle of the day, end of the day. Each one, there's different patterns, right? You have two or three different patterns you can trade. So there's a lot of different ways to get into a stock if the stock starts to trend. So it never tests the VWAP here. So I'm like, oh, man. It got close. It got close, but it didn't go. We'll talk about brokers at the end, Simon. So it got close, but it didn't go. But remember yesterday we learned something. If a stock makes a high, comes back and tests it again for the second test, and then you get a third one, what is that? Anybody know? Come on, you remember yesterday. What is that? Woo! Good, Sandy. Exactly. You need three tests of a resistance spot to break out. Right? We just call it a flat top breakout. You just go breakout. So even though it doesn't test the VWAP, we just learned yesterday, right, that anytime you test the level three times and that 9 EMA is curls for the girls under it, 
you can go back up to the upside, right? Now, this is a $40 stock. A lot of times people don't like trading $40 stock. Why? Because everybody always says this. Well, like if I have a small account, should I want to buy more shares? Not, no. <laughs> See, the thing is when you have a small account, you want to be able to trade stuff that has range. You want to be able to get in and out easily. I would rather have a $40 stock and trade 100, 200 shares of it if it's going to move around $2, $1, $2 back and forth because you can actually trade around it, right? You can play the waves and do all the fun stuff. But like when you look at a dollar stock, they'll pop, they'll, a dollar stock will show that it popped 20% for the day. It'll happen in like 30 seconds and then just sit around. Like you can't trade it back and forth throughout the day. Right, and that's as day traders, that's what we're looking to do. And you know, remember, you wanna grow your account 100, $200 at a time. So you know what? Buy 100 shares of it, put a stop loss on it. You're gonna risk from here to your nine EMA, what are you gonna risk? 20 cents, so you're gonna risk $20 for to potentially make $100, right? I'm just throwing out a number, right? That's a good reward to risk. If you continuously risk $20 to make $100, where would you be? If you lost on it, you'd lose 20. Then you lost on it even a second time, you'd be down 40. Then you win the third time, you're up 100. You get 100. So you're still plus 60. Now, our patterns work in high probability with high percentage. So you wouldn't be batting one out of three, but even if you were, you're still going to make some money. Right. That's where people when I was new, I kept looking for, you know, stocks that were like 50 cents because I would be like, well, I can buy more shares. And my mentor goes, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard. I'm like, why is it more shares, more money? <laughs> and he goes, well, no, if you had 10 shares, let's just do the math on this. Right. If we had 10 shares of a. Hold on here. If we had 10, 10 shares of a $100 stock, I'm just using extreme level, uh, how much money is that? 1,000, right? And what if it goes up 10%? How much money do you make? Anybody know? Anybody know? The Indians will know. You'd make 100 bucks. <laughs> now, if you had 1,000 shares of some turd, and it's going to be a turd, right? Thousand shares of a one dollar stock. That's going to cost you a thousand bucks. And if it went up ten percent, how much would you make? Hundred bucks. It's the same stuff. Now the only difference is ten shares will probably cost you maybe 50 cents in commissions, not even, right? 50 shares would cost, 100 shares for 27 cents, 200 shares for 50 cents, 10 shares are gonna cost you, let's say 10 cents in commissions, right? It's about 27, 30 cents for 100 shares usually. But if you had 1,000 shares, you could be spending Three dollars. Now, if you take 100 trades, you're gonna spend 300 bucks in commissions on one thing. But remember, you gotta sell it, right? So it's not really 300 bucks. It's gonna be 600 bucks. So if you got like a $2,000 account, you spend a lot of money on the commission. Where if you took Say you were, you know, trading, and I'm not saying it's going to always be 10 shares. It could be 50 shares, 100 shares, but it's going to be cheaper, right? Your commissions might be 60, 70 bucks, you know? So say you got a $2,000 account and you're doing this, or a $1,000 account. Well, if you had a $1,000 account, after 100 trades, you spend $600 in commissions in one, and you end up spending a lot more because there's always fees and, right, all that kind of junk. Right, so if you even trading a little bit higher of a price stock, um, it can help because. So like, see this, this stock went up 20, 20% 20 today, right? But 
it only moved five pennies. So like if you weren't in like, you know, in the beginning, the rest of the day after, you know, right, it's just going to sit around. And that can happen, you know, a lot. Like see this thing, like, you know, this thing opened at 120. Two hours later, it's at 120. Then it goes, you know, 127. It just, they don't always have the range that you're looking for, right? So like they're, they're more difficult to trade back and forth. You can't sashay around back and forth multiple times in a 50 cent stock. You have to just hope you get lucky and catch one of these spikes because the rest of the day it's going to sit around. Versus like I trade like this SQ stock quite a bit, right? You know, in a, in a stock like this, even though it's 70 bucks, there was a pop at the open, a pullback to the nine, so one pattern, right? Then you had a flag pattern here that you can play, right? Two patterns. Then you got pull back to nine EMA, third pattern. You got flag pattern up here, fourth pattern. Then you have a deeper VWAP pattern, you know, towards lunch, fifth pattern. Pretty good, right? One thing to remember too, guys, with commissions, the more you trade, the lower they make it. The more you trade, the lower they make it. So like, for example, um, in 2008, I used to, uh, when I went full-time trading, I paid $9.99 into, at Ameritrade. After my first month, I made like a thousand trades, right? So I just got just, just, you know, jizz on my face from, right? A dog basically at that point. So I'm, I'm blinded. I'm not feeling good. I mean, all these trades and I just spent like 10 grand. I only got a $40,000 count at the time. So I'm not feeling pretty good. So I call Ameritrade. I said, look, I made a thousand trades last month. They're like, oh, okay. I said, I'm going to leave. There's other brokers that are charging $2. And so they said, okay, we'll lower it to $6. So I got it at $6 per trade. Trade around for a week. I made a lot of trades. Call them back. Hey, I'm going to leave. They say, all right, we'll give you $4.99. Call them back two months later. They say, they tell me to bugger off. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll bugger off. And so they call back two weeks later. They tell me to bugger off again. So I call back every couple weeks for like a couple months. Finally, they say, okay, we'll give you $2.50, <laughs> right? You leave us alone. You will be able to take them down wherever. Because we got what you got to remember also with uh, brokers. And when I say 27 cents for 100 shares, that's what I personally pay. Um, that's what my students pay that, you know, trade on my platform. Um, the people that get trades that are like big brokers, they're getting the trades for like one or two pennies per trade. They're selling them to you for six bucks. But they're only paying maybe a couple pennies. So anytime there's like a hot deal for um, trading, think about what a trade is. You're going to hit a button. What does it cost them? <laughs> Nothing, right? They're going to pay a couple fees here. They're going to cost them a few pennies. Max, maybe 10 cents. So that's why I know you can always negotiate. Does that make sense? Cool. So I know I just went to opposite side for brokers, uh, but important so where were we VWAP is a lifestyle all right cool so let's get back into these VWAPs here real quick all right dun, 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 dun. Nick how we doing on time buddy I know. I'm just messing with you. Since you on the mic. All right. So this is our bill. So once again, I'll trade small caps. It just has to be it's not my focus. I'm only into stuff that I know can move, right? It's not whether it's 50 cents or $2, $40, $5. I'm interested in making money. So if it's $5 and I think I can make money, I'm going to take it. If it's $50, I think I can make money, get taken. If it's $500, I think you can make money. I'm going to take it. You ever trade Amazon? Sure. It's a $1,000 stock, but it moves around like 100 points in a day. So even if I'm only 
able to buy 10 shares if it's moving around 100 points. Yeah, I can still trade around it, right? So check this out. So the stock gaps up. You get the pullback to the VWAP. Also builds a flag pattern, right? So this is a $5 stock. So I took this thing down like 550 or so. Now this is the thing with small caps. They'll pop up like this. So it pops up to about seven bucks. In small cap stocks, you have to just sell, sell, sell. You just scale out one third at a time, basically, and then keep some for mulatto, right? Now, as the day goes on, the stock pulls back to the VWAP. You see this? At like 11 o'clock, remember midday, they work really well. So now once you start to get the green candles to hold over the VWAP, that's your confirmation. Once you got the confirmation, now you know, right, that this area is starting to hold. So you, what you're going to do is you get the hold is you can buy, set your stop. So you're going to have this thing at like say 620, 630, right? And then boom, off to the races. Now, the one thing that's good thing about certain small cap stocks, if you get a PR and they do big volume, when I mean big volume is you want to see like whatever the float is, you want to see it like times 10. So you want to see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million shares, uh, but only if the float is low. Right? So you're going to buy. So you're going to risk like, say, let's say 30 cents or whatever, but you have the potential to make a couple bucks. Right, so a thousand, you know, thousand shares, you can make two thousand dollars potentially. Right, that's a potentially. If you know what you're doing, though, you'll be able to catch them at the right time, and then we just got to put you in situations where the risk is small and the reward is big. You know what? Is sometimes VWAPs don't work. I was in this stupid trade today, and this was. <laughs> So pathetic. <laughs> so, you know, I got in this trade. The stock just started to fly. And then, you know, it started to pull back. And I got it even before the VWAP, which was a mistake. Um, but then it just sat around on the VWAP all day, right? And it was like, oh, my man, this is like it teased so many times. It popped up, came down, popped up, came down, popped up, came down. And you know what? In the end, this stock doesn't react well to this because, you know, it's a commodity stock. Like tech stocks are the cleanest stocks to trade right now. But these commodity stocks can be a little bit kind of bullshit. So, like, you know, you see a test and it pops up. It tests a VWAP. So it does react well to the VWAP. But, you know, one of the things I should have been more mindful of, is the more time, if you just keep testing it and it never pops, well, the more times, remember we learned this yesterday, the more times you test something, what's going to happen? The more times you test something, the weaker it gets, right? So, like they said, one test, two tests, three tests. Man, I just screwed up on this thing. You know, four tests. I should have been just dumping on this thing so quick, not wasting my time. I've got my chat room, uh, Mr. Chris, man. He's the same thing, man. Me and him, we're like buddies, and we're looking at it. He's just, I could tell. I was feel so bad because I could tell. Like, he's just pulling off. He's pulling out his nose hairs in frustration. We're just sitting here, and there's, like, all these other stocks going. I'm like. Wait, it's holding the VWAP. It's holding the VWAP. And then, you know, they just break under sometimes. So you've got to really make sure, like, once it holds and it starts around, let it pop, right? No, Tim, this is, um, you know, this is 1982. It's April, buddy. You are in the Xander zone. You are in the Xander zone. Of course, this is recorded. The world has ended. Fire and blood have hit Earth, and there are cybernetic organisms that have taken over. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the cyber, <laughs> the cy <laughs> sorry, man, I was just watching Terminator the other day. I've been thinking a lot about the cybernetic organisms <laughs> sent back in time. Oh, shit. I apologize. I'm, I'm just messing with you, Tim. I just wanted to let you know it's not <laughs> in my own way. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, the most annoying person in the world is guy who laughs at his own jokes. <laughs> right? Like That guy's an asshole. Now I am the asshole. Good Lord. Where were we? <laughs> shit. Oh, man. <laughs> 
don't know what's wrong with me. At least I haven't swore today, right? We're really, we're, we're, <laughs> we're really in for a treat when I'm not even swearing. Now, on the other way, let's talk about VWAP failures. So VWAP failures, which happen midday. So like, you know, if you get a stock that like, say, breaks down, see how like this stock starts to break down, right? Like midday, you'll often see stocks like pop right back into the VWAP area. And when you get a red candle to hold, you can take that, put a stop under, and now you're going to get into like a secondary day trade. One thing to remember about our style of like kind of momentum trading too is that like say I take a trade at the open. Well, it's meant to be held at the open. Say I was taking a trade like midday, for example. If I'm taking a trade midday, I'm only holding it really for those couple hours unless it just trends, right? But like a midday trade is meant to be X, Y, Z. So you'll see this oftentimes like midday. See how like the stock just gets shredded at the open, right? And then as the day starts to go on, you'll start to see, whoa, right? You see this thing pop into the VWAP, right? Red candle holds, your stop's going to go right above. Now, this little sucker was stubborn. So like I hit this thing at like, you know, close to 70 bucks. It comes down to like 69. And, you know, I always cover a little bit, take some profits. You know, if I get a dollar... I always have a saying, you put a dollar in my pocket, I'm going to take it, right? Put a dollar in my pocket, I'm going to take it. So I'm up a buck on it, give or take. You know, I'll always take off half, you know, if I can. And that's just, a, I think it's an Indian thing. You know, it's got to be an immigrant Indian thing. But it's always in my head. You put a dollar in my pocket, that's what my dad used to tell me. Put a dollar in my pocket, man, I'm going to take it. <laughs> right? So I always go with that mentality. You know, I'm from Michigan. Man, my parents are immigrants. We see money, we ain't wasted it. So short, so I cover some. Now this thing pops back into the VWAP. Red candle to hold, add some more. I'm not even afraid to go in like one and a half times size or two times my normal size if my risk is really low. Like if I'm going to risk, say, 20, 30 cents, I have no problem buying as many shares as I can handle, right? Because my risk is low. Now, our overall targets are usually back down towards a low of day, right? So you're going to get this thing near 70 again, right? And always, if I get a dollar in my pocket, I'm looking to take some. Uh, if it's riding along as 90 EMA, though, I won't take it off, right? If it's riding along as 90 EMA, I won't take it off unless it just gets really extended. So then you'll start to get yourself some really nice shreds. And remember, don't worry about the price of the stock. If you dead broke, you got the smallest account ever, and all you can trade is 50 shares, and a stock rips three, four, five dollars, how much money can you make? 150 bucks, 200 bucks, maybe, right? You know, depend. Nobody ever plays it perfect where you know you're gonna say, hey, I just hold it all the way down for the five bucks, right? But you know, I mean, hypothetically, right? Yeah, even 50 shares. You know, rips two, three, four dollars. Yeah, you make a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks. Hey, Nahoon, um, in a couple weeks, they'll have a new. Um, so I have TC2000 on my Mac. You have to use the version 12.5, but they're going to have that updated in like two, three weeks. Um, and I'll let you know when they do that or go on their customer service, but uh, they assure me that'll be in two, three weeks. But they do have the version 12.5, but it's, you know, obviously a couple versions older than the one. We got right now. Does this make sense so far? So we can use VWAP when a stock pops up and it pulls back to the VWAP. We can use it for bounce. And when a stock is coming down and it pulls back into the VWAP, we can use it for a fade. Right? So those are the two different ways that we can use the VWAP. Let me find you kind of one more. One more on the short side, because the short side is the fun side, right? Man, there's some, and who here likes a short more than long? Who here is like into shorting? Anybody here that's really into shorting, like betting on stocks to go down? It's fun, right? I think it's, you know why? I think because we're all just like barbarians, right? So like shorting is fun because it's like, you know, like we're like slaughtering the stock, right? Like anytime, so like there's no difference between longing and shorting, right? 
you make money in up or you make money in down. It's the same mechanics. But like I noticed like when I did it short, I'm like, oh, I'm going to teach this stock a lesson. Right? <laughs> I'm going to teach this stock a lesson. Right? And legit, we're going to make it go down. And, uh, you know, shorts do not have unlimited losses. You know, you're, you choose your losses. Um, there's no such thing as unlimited losses unless you want them to. If my stop loss is 10 cents away, my risk is 10 cents. If my stop loss is 20 cents away, my risk is 20 cents away. And you're right. Um, if my stop loss, I don't have one, then, yeah, my risk would be unlimited. Right? It would be unlimited in any stock at that point. You know, you can um, buy a stock, it can go to zero too. In the U.S., you don't need much, Sashi. Oh, man, yeah, make, betting on stocks go down all the time. Like when PCG was like 40 bucks and they announced that news that they started the fires, you know, we were saying the chat room, we're like, we're going to show these guys what American justice is all about. And we're all sorting the crap out of it. It's like take a sense of glee out of it. And it's no different, right? You make 50 cents if it goes up, 50 cents if it goes down. But like there's something about shorting that just kind of makes you feel fun. Now, like, so see how this uh, nectar, nectar comes in and has like, so it gets down to 63 at the first tick, drops $13, right? $13. By the way, look, no matter what size account you are, something has this kind of range. We can move 10 bucks. Who cares if you have 50 shares, 100 shares? Don't worry about the price of the stock. Don't just beat that into your heads because I love you guys too much for you to just waste money and jump. Because you know what? Anytime I go on the YouTube, you see some penny stock, pimply faced penny stock guru, right? And he's going to be like, hey, guys, I took my $400 account into $50,000. And you're like, no, you did it. <laughs> right? Like, no, you did it. Boom. So this thing comes down. <laughs> like, it comes down. Like, I have to show my profit and loss in my chat room every day. Man, it's embarrassing some days how I trade. It sucks. Right? You got to look your members in the eye and tell them you're an asshole. Do you trade like an asshole? But that's trading. That's life. Right? Nobody's taking their $400 account into a million dollars. So you got the 63 down to 51. This thing starts to come up. Right? This is midday. What do we look for midday? What do we look for midday? VWAP. Guys, it's a life stock. Good, Bruno. Stock hits the VWAP. We need that. So look, you see how it hits the VWAP here? But can I take it here? Like, do I want to take it here? This candle or this candle? No. The reason I don't want to do that is because I don't get the red candle to hold. I need the red candle to hold for, for confirmation. Like we're not, we don't need crazy confirmation on a tray, right? We're not trying to be the presidents of the confirmation society, but we do need a little bit, right? We need enough to just know. And then it's just a matter of coming down, coming down, coming down. And usually your old, you know, your old low can be the top, you know, the old low can be, um, you know, one of your targets. See, if you're getting this thing, like at say 55, right? You, you know, this thing, you get down to 51, you got yourself a nice reward to risk right there. Good. Hey guys, a bunch of people are asking, um, will I do like a, like a demo video or a TC2000 video like live if they're going to come into boot camp? Um, that starts on the 29th. Um, yeah, I'll do one for you guys. So, you know, if anybody is going to be coming into boot camp or, you know, needs a call about a class that starts on the 29th or 60 day boot camp, uh, just put in your email, phone number. I'll have Nick reach out to you, you know, tomorrow or Omer. And, uh, you know, they'll make sure to get you all your class links and stuff. And um, I'll make sure to get you the layouts to your TC2000 stuff tonight. So, you know, you'll be able to come on and uh, have, you know, you'll be able to come on and have your stuff look like my stuff, which is always important, right? One of the craziest parts about trading is not the class, right? It's how do you get everything situated, 
Where do I trade? What's my software look like? What do my scans look like? Right? And so what I just do is I just give my stuff to my students. I make their stuff look like mine. You know, we just have layouts. I just import them. I give them the scans, all that stuff. And then day one, we're just teaching and learning on our own platforms, you know, and they can use any platform they want. Uh, but, you know, we're starting off that way so that we're all looking at the same stuff. And I think that's really important. Arun, you in uh, Alabama? A brown man with a 205? That's dangerous. <laughs> that is dangerous. 205, is that Birmingham? Good. Man, you got to come down to Destin. I think we spoke on the phone before. If I remember correctly, I was in Chicago. Good. Simon, I got gotcha. you. Hey, Simon, by the way, uh, where in the UK are you? So I actually have a student named Simon that lives in, um, it's spelled reading, but it's pronounced Reading. I actually visited him at his place over there. I got to hook you up with him. He's a cool ass dude. Ah, man, you're in Colorado. <laughs> How you like in Colorado, my friend? Sweet. Does that make sense on these kind of VWAPs then? Good. Guys, remember why so many people fail in trading, right? People fail in trading for a few simple reasons. But, you know, in general, this is what I think, right? You're going to fail your trading for a couple different reasons. Let me get out my trusty sticky notes here. Hold on. I need to get these things. So the people fail in trading for a few different reasons. Number one, of course, is their risk management. But number two, you know, a lot of times we fail in trading because as humans, we're just like these information whores, right? We like take pieces of information from all these different places. So like this is what I used to do. I used to read like two books. I'd read two books like every month on trading. Now, these books are never similar, right? You're just taking whatever book you can get in the library at the time when people used to go to the library. Then you'd watch some videos. Terry, are you in Destin too? Then you watch some videos. Man, you got to come over to the house tomorrow. Um, then you got to watch some videos. Then you got to go into some chat rooms. Then you got to go to your Twitter. Twitter. And you go on these Facebook stock groups. So you're going to compile all this junk, right? This just information. This just blob of information, right? And the stock industry has more content out there, I swear, than even the porn industry, right? You go on YouTube, and it's no different than you porn. Like, it's for stocks. Like, it, it, there's so much stuff out there. So you start to compile all this junk on top of other junk. And then, you know what happens? Yeah, I know, Mr. Terry. Then... You have to pile more junk and more junk. So what happens, you have a weak foundation, and then you're adding information that doesn't really mesh well together, right? The fusion is just not there. So now you get this hodgepodge of information that lacks a system. So when you think of a trading system, think of a cookbook, right? Anybody ever open a cookbook? In cookbook, there's recipes. Each recipe has a very specific profile of things. There's like 15, 20 ingredients. Then they give you the steps of what you need to do. So if you're baking a dish and one of the steps in your recipe is wrong, what happens? Your dish tastes like crap. Always, right? If you miss one thing, if you forget to put the salt in, what happens? You have this dish you're making. You're making a meatloaf, right? You can say, Mom, where's my meatloaf? So you got this meatloaf going. It's a hot meatloaf. Man, it's a, one of them spicy ones with not too much breading. Right? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. So you got the spicy meat love. All of a sudden you forget to put the salt. Man, that man, man that meatloaf ain't tasting right. You know that, right? You <laughs> you know that you know that meatloaf is not tasting right. What if you forgot to put the bread in? You know what that meatloaf is? It's just a piece of meat, right? So you forget to put the bread. So now you got this big one pound, just burnt hunk of meat. 
It's just like a very big, dry hamburger. So the breading is very important. So in trading is the same way. If you have a recipe for a tray and you forget one of those ingredients, even if it seems like a small ingredient, what happens is your trade becomes a loss. As traders, we need to line up all the pieces of our recipe to have that perfect dish. Because in trading, you are trading as the smartest, most crooked people in the world. Man, I've taken so many losses as a trader when I was brand new because I didn't understand that aspect of it. It was it's mind boggling. Because when I was learning to be a trader, I was just like, yeah, man, if I read these books, I'm gonna make some money, right? Like, like I've earned the right to sit around in my underwear, wiping Doritos out of my chest hair for fun. No. I didn't realize when I was in my 20s that I'm trading against the smartest, most crooked, and richest people in the world that are literally out there probably committing crimes right now. I'm going to compete with them by what? Go to the library, read a couple books? Missing pieces of my recipe? No, right? To win against the big boys, right? We have to have a good system. But then there are things we have to do to even the playing field, which we'll talk about in a second, right? So think about the recipe, right? Nothing can be missing. I know, just, man, that sounds depressing, right? Like you're saying, man, your drink is the smartest fucking most crooked people in the world. Like, how could you win, <laughs> right? This is how you win. There are edges in life. Does anybody know what an edge means? Edge is essentially like when you have something over the rest of a group, right? Like I have something that is above and beyond what other people have, right? I have an edge. Like in... um. <clears throat> Football, right? Everybody watch football for the most part, right? Like you can tell, right? Like Tom Brady has an edge in what? Well, number one, experience. That's an edge, right? He obviously has an edge in his preparation, right? There's different things. He doesn't necessarily have an athletic edge, right? In terms of I can jump higher than you this, but he finds edges, right? They're to, to be better than the rest. So in business or in trading, there are edges, right? Like what is one type of edge in the stock market? Well, you can have an edge in experience, right? I got more experience than another person. You can have an edge in capital. That's huge. I know like we're not supposed to say that, right? Like, no, oh. but we all know like the guy that's got like $200,000 that, you know, his daddy gave him. Yeah, <laughs> like he has an edge, right? So that's huge. So you can have an edge of capital. You could have an edge in strategy, right? Like I have a better strategy than another. But all of these are kind of hard. Like if your train gets like you know really really well seasoned people, but you can have an edge in right your discipline. I'm more disciplined than somebody else. I'll do my work every single day, right? You could have, you know, that's a huge edge, right? So um, I could have an edge in yeah my processes my systems, right? Uh, my organization, how I take notes, how I learn. That's a huge edge, right? Like, are you a learner? Are you willing to get better every day? I got some friends that are traders of mine. I won't name any names, but you know, they have no interest in journaling their trades, getting better. I showed you guys my trade journal yesterday. After all these years, I'm still journaling. Why? Because I have to fine tune my stuff all the time, right? Because I know that's just one of the ways that I get an edge, right? A lot of times when you get to a certain age or a certain level in life, what do you do? You wake up, you go to work, do your thing, wake up, go to work, do your thing. You become complacent, right? And complacency is just death at that point in your business. So yes, your processes in your system, and how you get organized. Those are huge things. And then, yeah, your engine hard work. Can I outwork another man? That's huge. 
if a guy is 10% smarter than me and works eight, he's 10% smarter than me where he works eight hours a day, but I work, gosh darn, 16, who wins? What if you work 20? I know the new thing right now with all the self-help gurus is you got to sleep the eight hours and drink the coconut oil and all that garbage. But in the old school way, man on man, woman on woman, man, that sounds dirty, right? Hard work can even the playing field. If somebody has more money than you, more experience than you, more capital than you, a better family than you, they went to better schools than you, fuck them. Right, you can still even the playing field by sometimes just getting your hands dirty and going to work. Right, journaling, processes, systems, getting organized. All of those things still matter. Having that personal discipline to go out and do your work every day and the personal discipline to follow your system, right? Having the courage to keep learning, having the courage to journal your mistakes, admit them and fix them, right? That takes courage. Those are different ways that you can build an edge. And those are the things, guys, where you won't be part of that 95% that blows up their account. And our boot camp, as much as it is based on strategy, it is also based on that. How do we get people to be the best they can be? You know, of course, I can, of course, just bark at people all day, but we've got to do it, right? We've got to talk about it every single day. Camille, I got you. So the trading, guys, it's, it is one of the best professions out there. You guys, you see me, if you see me on the Instagram stuff, you see me all over the world doing all <laughs> sorts of shady stuff, right? It is a cool profession. But it's no different being a doctor, lawyer, whatever. It's just a job, restaurant owner. It's a job, Right? The reason that there's not very many good traders right now is that, you know, people have been learning how to be doctors for thousands of years. But for us, right, this is all just new. Nobody taught people how to trade. There's no college course for this. So we give you that foundation, tools for success. It will help you put it together. Guys, if you are coming into our next class, you know, make sure to put in your phone number. We're running a deal right now. So our 60-day boot camp, now that's a mouthful. Why is the damn class so long? So you've probably been on other people's websites, the YouTubes, all that stuff, right? What do people do? I've got a four-hour DVD that's going to show you how to make a million bucks, right? <laughs> hey, watch my DVD and all of a sudden you're going to be a trade. That's not the case. Never going to be the case. Anybody that tells you, that is the case. They're liars. They're liars. But it doesn't have to be 10 years, five years, four years, three years, anything like that. But what I do need, what I expect, is your undying attention for 60 days. 60 days of work. That's what it takes, I think, to get the knowledge in. Now, I make sure that all my classes are recorded, they're archived. So I'm well aware that people have lives. So what I do in my class, all my students, they get lifetime access to my 60 day boot camp. They can come in live into class as many times as they want. On this 29th, when we start, you will see people in class that took my boot camp. So we're going on boot camp 42. You will see people that took class in boot camp three, boot camp four, boot camp five saying hello. They might not even need it, but it's just part of their process because the one thing that's always certain in life is Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I'm teaching class at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So our boot camp module page, you know, is all, you know, you get all the recordings and all this stuff. So, you know, if you're busy, you can watch a recording, then you can hit me up on the cell or email. And, uh, you know, make sure to get back to your questions, all that kind of fun stuff. The other thing is, even though they're live, they're recorded, we have quizzes, homework. It's a university-style setting. I also put people into my chat room where I trade live on webinar every single day. You'll see today I lost 1000 bucks. No fun, right? But I trade, I trade in front of them on screen share. 
every single day. Yesterday I made 2,000 bucks, good, right? Some days I win, some days I lose. Day before I made 550 bucks, but whatever it is, we gotta trade the way we gotta trade. So we got a good group of people, good chunk of these people, they trade for a living. All of them are my students though. I've got other moderators and other stuff in there. The chat room is just a chat room. I put a link in the chat room every morning for the, a webinar link so you can watch live like on my screen. So essentially what I'll do is like I have like my trading platform and kind of all that stuff up and I'm hitting the buttons in front of you. Hey guys, like I'm buying this, I'm buying that. That's how you learn. You have to have the screen share, but you got to really watch somebody hit the buttons and take that book knowledge and marry it to the real life knowledge, right? Like you're going to school, that's great, but sometimes you got to hit the streets, marry those together. And I'm a big believer in school. I'm a big believer in learning, you know, in the real life. So that's how we like to put our system together. From there, we'll use TC2000. We'll put you guys on trading simulators, right? We'll put you guys on trading simulators. And you know what? We'll be able to see like the stuff that you guys do, right? So like, you know, I can see like, I can see different people's trades. So I say, hey man, what's Eric up to? Oh, Eric made on January 8th, $577. Oh, on Thursday, he made $369. And right, Eric is brand new. He's actually in college. Um, <laughs> I think he's be, is he a dental school? No, no, he's the anesthesiologist nurse. I didn't even know the anesthesiologist would need a nurse, but I guess they do. So, you know, I can see like everybody's trades and we'll grade them and uh, you'll be able to kind of do that. That's how you're going to get better, right? When somebody says, when somebody looks at your trade and says, holy shit, this trade, this trade sucks, right? <laughs> that, that can be a huge help to doing what you're going to be doing. You guys, you get lifetime access to this. And I also have a Slack group and stuff like that. So you can come in. And, you know, we chit with each other. You can message me um, during the trading day or even at night. And, you know, I talk to these guys all day and kind of all that stuff. They show me their trades. So we have a nice Slack group where you get that kind of that one-on-one -on -one stuff that you need with the other students and, you know, with your with myself if you need me. Uh, you know, we'll have different categories that you can post your homework and all that kind of fun stuff. And then, of course, we got – uh, 200 page training course book. Um, it's a thick one, right? It's a thick one, but I mean, that's the that's probably the best trading course book. I'm not even lying here. It's one of the best trading course books around because it's not actually a book, right? Like it's not a book. You read a trading book, it's so much of it. This is a course book, so it's trading patterns, how everything works. It's just like you know, it's an encyclopedia of trading of what I do uh, versus like a book. Um, so it's kind of cool. And then bonus, we do live events once every quarter this year. Uh, we'll go be going this year, Dallas, Atlanta, trying to find a place in the West Coast, probably like Los Angeles, and then uh, maybe a Boston, New York. So these live events will have maybe 30 people. We'll do them at a hotel. It'll be like, man, it's going to be work though. I know a lot of you guys are coming. A lot of guys, we learned this at our last event in Dallas. Out of the 20 people, like, you know, 12 of them were really there. They were ready to work like 12 hours a day kind of thing. And then, you know, like eight of them were like, man, this is a way to like, this is a way to get away from my family. So, <laughs> so we would just be real. Look, Nick, you tired? What's going on? I saw you give me that look. Oh. These guys get a little winded from answering questions. So we'll do four live events, but it's work. You know, the last one, man, we were starting class at like 7 in the morning, going to 7 at night. Uh, and then we were out drinking and stuff, of course. But <laughs> we were really working. Uh, you also get an annual day trader chat room service. You can be in our day trading chat room. And then we haven't really touched on it. Uh, five of the classes that we do are on swing trading. So for those of you guys that have jobs, part-time traders, you run businesses, you're doctors, lawyers, whatever. You got you got kids, your moms. Uh, 
and you can't sit at the computer all day. Part-time trading is how I got started. Like, you know, I had a great job when I was in my 20s that I really liked for the most part. Um, I did all my first money that I made from actually part-time trading, swing trading, which is holding stocks like kind of couple days, a couple weeks, max for me, two to 14 days where you're taking like, you know, bigger chunks. So when you think about like trading, there's not one that makes more money than the other. A day in day trading, you're getting like, say, 1%, 2% over and over. I'm just making up a number, right? So you do it 10, 20 times and then you have some losses. Where swing trading, you know, you may just be holding for 10 or 20%. In the end, it kind of evens out the way you need to even out. So we'll also be giving our annual part-time trader service, uh, which is pretty cool. You'll have like a week, a nightly video describing the market. What are the potential part, you know, like longer term trades, those kind of like those two to 14 day trades. So you'll have them all in a video and a watch list of them. And then, you know, we make sure to alert them you know, with like what we're doing so that you'll get a text message when we enter like a longer term trade. Uh, my mentor, Paul, who's like this awesome dude, uh, at, you know, he he does the service and he's, I mean, he's my mentor. So he's, man, he was the coolest dude I know. I can look at my, say he might be in this class. So I can't really bash him, right? <laughs> so we're going to do this for, it's $25.99. It'll be $2,300 for the first five people. 2300 for the first five people. If you're coming in and you want the early bird special at 2300 that's the class, but also the bonuses, right? The bonuses are about $3,000 right there. And no, I'm not going to be inviting people to live event for $20, right? Uh, our last live event was $1,500 a person. And, you know, we were turning people down. I only wanted 20 people in them so I could actually get to work. So $2,300 for the first five people. We do have payment plan options and all that kind of fun stuff. We'll make it happen. I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, whether you can do this or not. Anybody ever go through life and it's like, you know, one year begets another and you always kind of come in with like, man, when things clear up, I'm going to do this or do that. I do it all the time, but I do it with getting a girlfriend. I'm like, man, 2019, I'm going to get myself a girlfriend. My mom's like, you said that in 2018. I'm like, I know. I was close, right? And then she's like, you said it in 2017. I'm like, I know. I was close, right? There's never a right time to do the right thing because there's always going to be work and kids and family and death, right? Every year, somebody in your family is going to die. And every year, your boss is going to bug you. And every year, your kids are going to have broken bones and messed up teeth that need braces. That's just the way of life. You know, I've done that. I do it in other stuff, not in stocks, but I do that in other stuff. So if you're, um, you know, if you're ready to roll, we'll work out some payment plans and make sure that you guys can get in and do what you got to do. I ain't lying. It's a lot of work. Think about that. 60 days, live events, chat room, Right, you got to do, man, you got to do a lot of work. I don't know what else to tell you. I really believe, though, you try to buy or go to anything that's just like a couple hours, a couple days, you're going to be shortchanged. Remember that trading requires a recipe. Those recipes aren't three ingredients, right? You name me one dish that has three ingredients. There's a lot to this stuff, but if we learn the right way, and then we repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. You know, there's a reason I give lifetime access to all the classes and taking the classes live is because I know a lot of times, even when you know the stuff, you still got to come into class. You still want to prepare, right? It's like just part of what you do. You know, most of my students, guys like Nick, Nick's been with me for years. You know, he works for me now because he's got a knack for this stuff. But I mean, shit, I mean, he took my class like three years ago, right? <laughs> like, it's never just like the process you think of, hey, I buy this class tomorrow on boats and hoes. I wish, man. That'd be nice, right? I had lost, by the time I was boats and hoes, I'd already lost all my hair, so I couldn't even do it. 
I couldn't even do it right. <laughs> I couldn't even do it right. And if anybody guys ever want to follow me, uh, Twitter, Instagram, I'm Canal Zero Zero. Uh, <clears throat> most of you guys got my cell number. That's not a company number. That's my cell. Uh, some of you guys texted me yesterday. Let me know what's up, what's going on. You can always get a hold of me and do that. Let's open this thing up to some questions and get this pate started. And hold on one second. Let me just get a little fluffer of water, man. 7.30 in the morning, I start my first class, first webinar every day. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way. Any Chinese food again? Whoa. Mid webinar? <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Um, Nicholas, yeah. Nicholas asked, do I still trade AMD? Uh, I mean, I haven't traded recently, but it's on my watch list. <coughs> when to use the 20 EMA? Um, Sarub, there'll be 20 EMA uh, patterns. You know, that's also, that's not going to be at the open. That's going to be a little bit later in the day. Good. Uh, how much capital can I start with? You know, I would try to start with maybe a couple thousand dollars. Or, I mean, the more capital you have, the better. Frankly, what capital does is it erases, what capital does is it erases mistakes. All right? When you have bigger money, you can do a lot more fucked up shit, right? You ever see a trust fund kid run around town doing all sorts of fucked up shit, right? They can get away with it because they got more money. Trading is the same way. The difference between having a $2,000 account and a $5,000 account doesn't seem like much, but man, it gives you a lot more leeway to do what you got to do. You know, I get some students, they come in with $20,000, $30,000, $50,000, $100,000 accounts, right? Even more, right? If they're building portfolios. They just get more leeway. It doesn't make them better because they still got to do the same stuff, but it allows them more room to make mistakes. I think that's sometimes important. You know, you know, we got to do what we want. You man, while you're taking class, this is what I do. You're taking you're taking boot camp class for 60 days. Man, you're working your butt off. Work's a little slow. You're thinking, man, I ain't got that much money around. You Uber. Now you get a job at Uber, you start Ubering people around. And when you're doing the Uber, go by the bars and stuff. And man, you chit chat and hit on people, give them like nice compliments. Anytime I'm a little bit, I've learned this. This is why it's Uber stuff is the best job for this. Anytime I'm like buttered and the Uber driver is super nice, he's got like water and he's got like a Twix bar. I'm like, my Uber would be like four bucks and I'll end up giving like a $10 tip. I'll be like, man, the Uber guy give me a Twix bar. Right. And then when you're doing the thing, I'm like, man, I got to give some money. So, man, you start making those ten dollars, ten dollars, ten dollars. All of a sudden, you're you got a lot more trading capital than you think. I think the easiest money that you make when you're trading is when you have supplemental income while you're working out the jitters in the screen experience. Simon, yeah. So I have students, man. I, I some of them I work with a long time. Like you know, I know them. They're, I'm hammering at them till they get it. Some people are quick learners. Some people got families, jobs, kids. They got to go through the process a lot slower. That's why everything is, you know, lifetime access. Hey, Nicholas, um, go on our YouTube page and check out Paul's last webinar. Uh, he just did a webinar like maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, on some swing trading setups because I don't have a, you know, there's no quick way to describe. I mean, it just took me right an hour to talk to you about VWAP and it's just an indicator. Sarab, uh, Nick, what did you, were you working at Kraken or something? Were you a crypto exchange or stocks? Nadex, woo, binary options. The most annoying YouTube videos ever. Welcome to Nadex, the binary options. Every time 
it used to be, <laughs> it used to be when I turn them on YouTube, I'd see the Nadex things. And then lately it's just been these guys on the private jet. He's like, I'm the world's best options trader. And you're like, how does anybody quantify that? <laughs> Wanda, Wanda, should I use a stop loss on every trade? I think so. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome to my private chat. <laughs> While I wear a jean jacket. <laughs> I hang out with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I'll tell you what. I, I only got like four good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so if I run around private jet, I'm having models with me. <laughs> I'm having models with me. I'm wearing suits. Man, I wear a suit even if I gotta go to the bank. I don't get to leave the house much. Even if I gotta go to the bank, man, take out like fifty dollars. Man, I'll put that suit on. Oh yeah, I, I wear I got all sorts of good suits. It's too hot in Florida to wear them, but when I'm in Michigan, I'm wearing them all the time. Hey Warren, how you doing? Um TC two thousand, if you use the version twelve point five, that'll run in your Mac. And in uh, I think they told me two, three weeks max, they'll have um an updated Mac um application that'll look like this, you know, version eighteen point ten. So you just maybe wait a couple weeks. And I've been bothering them every day. So I'll be on it. <laughs> Derek, uh, Pure Park, where's that at? You know what? I've actually never been to Panama City. I know that's fucked up, right? <laughs> I've never been. But I've only been here four years, I think. I know, I'm in Miramar Beach. Plus, I work at home. I don't get that much. Is there a way, Andrew, good question. Is there a way to see short interest in real time? Andrew, there's not. So short interest data is only uh, updated like every two weeks. Moonu, Moonu, I got you. If you've already got the swing trade alerts, I'll hook you up with something else. How do you decide exit point on day trade when the stock is trending high? So I use EMAs, then I use higher highs, higher lows, and then I'm just watching the trend. Also, if something gets vertical or parabolic, I tend to get out of it. Common sense overrules your trading rules. In trading and business, anything you do, right? Common sense beats everything else. You can have the best system in the world, but sometimes just straightforward, good, solid, Midwestern common sense will beat any trading rule ever. So like if stock starts getting parabolic, it just gets wild. You use your Midwestern Michigan common sense and say, you know what? That's a little bit too far, too fast. I'm getting out of it. Mike, if you just download it, if you just download it, what shows up is the free version. You just don't put in, you know, all your stuff. You know what, Reef? The thing with DGAS, uh, UGAS is you don't know. Like, you're just kind of trading, like, the intraday. You don't know. I know it's an awful answer, right? You don't know. Um you know, you go with the overall daily chart, uh, you know, whether it's at support or resistance, but you got to use UNG, not uh, not the actual DGAS chart. DGAS chart is just for the intraday. But you're literally like, if it's just stuck in a range, you leave it alone. But if it starts to break out and trend, then you're hitting the flags and stuff, Reef. And that's really the only way I've learned how to, you know, I've had success trading it. Otherwise, it's like, Simon, you have Baltimore? You is this the wire? Lamar Jackson? 
Hot damn. Is this where we're going? Maryland's finest? I like it. Hey, Reed, does that make sense, though? Like, you got to kind of let the intraday trend set and then go. Otherwise, it just moves haphazard. Hey, Melinda, how are you? Uh, Melinda said you use a one-minute chart in addition to the five-minute chart when you trade the open. I sometimes will use a one-minute chart um, if I think a stock is going to move fast. But most of the time, I use five-minute chart. I'll be honest, Melinda, I think I have a little bit bad risk management sometimes. I use looser stop losses. So when I do a lot of one-minute chart trading, man, I'm always getting chopped out. I just see patterns everywhere. So I do prefer five-minute chart. But if I just have like that gut feeling like, man, this thing is going to rip, then, yeah, I, um, I'll move to a one-minute. But it's maybe about 10% of the time at the open and only on certain stocks. Yeah, Nick, you know, if you just get that inkling like it's not something's not going to wait for you, then you got to do it. Eric, do you have a goal you set to make each day or you just try to trade the best patterns? Uh, Eric, if I make money in the first two hours of the day, I'm out of here. I don't care if it's 1,000, 2,000, 10,000. If I make at least 1,000, I'm feeling pretty good. And it's 11 o'clock, which is 10 o'clock my time, I'm out of here. I didn't work this hard to work this hard. Does that ever make sense? <laughs> I worked this hard to work this hard. So if I made a few good trades, I know after a few good trades, like things fall off the table too. Midday is a grind. So like if I made a few good trades in the morning, man, I'm out. You'll be 10 o'clock. You see me at the beach. I know it's a little bit taboo, but you, you see me out at the bar at 10 o'clock if I have to be. You know, I live on the beach. But I won't be at that computer because midday, the market grinds and I always give it back. Um, but like today, like I traded all day. You know, like, look, if you don't hit any of your goals and you can't get it going, I mean, I, you know, I stay, I stick it up. Uh, if the 90 way is not closed, but there's a flag pattern, the price is near resistance, then the pattern is really not that tight, Sarab. So I usually just, um, Mr. Terry, you know what? Um, send me your, I think I got your phone number over here and I got your email. So I'll give you a text tomorrow. I'll give you a text this weekend. I'll pop by for sure. Sorry, but then 90 EMA is far, then your pattern is loose. You can take it, but it's just there's a higher probability than not you're going to lose. So, you know, you can take it. It's just a matter of do you want to win or not win. Guys, in general, though, you can take any trade you want in life. I got some students I've had over the years, they want to lose. I'm like, I will tell them. I had talked with one of my students yesterday. I said, look. If you keep doing this particular thing, you will lose your home, your wife will divorce you, and your kids will hate you. I'm just trying to, you know, get it in his head. That type of behavior is not acceptable. Today, he did it again. He goes, man, I did it again. I go, that's because you hate your wife, you hate your kids, and you want to lose your home. Do it again. And he's like, I won't do it again. Today, he did it again. Today, he did it again. I said, hot damn, we've been talking about this for months, right? It's a very simple thing. You just stay away from this one thing. Can't do it. Sometimes people are just gluttons for punishment. They want to punish themselves. But I think over time I can turn people. I once had these two lesbian chicks. <laughs> but I was always convinced I could turn them. Hey, so anybody that, um, man, anybody that wants to trade on TOS or Finviz, go for it. All, all the uh, scanning and parameters and moving averages, they all show up really easy in TOS too. Julius, man, you come to Destin, you better show up. 
Good, good, good. Anybody else? If you had a million dollars, guys, what would you do? If you had a million dollars, what would you do? What movie is that from? Anybody know? <laughs> it's from a movie. <laughs> Man. Hold on. Let me try to find the clip. <laughs> you get a million dollars. What would you do? watch this movie all the time <laughs> oh shit office space guys phone number put your phone number in put your email in if you want a trading consultation just a one-on-one -on -one. talk about your goals talk about where you're at and how we can work together put in your phone number put in your email and I will have myself or Omar call you, and we'll do a little trading journey, right? We'll see where you're at, where you need to go, and how to get there, all right? So put in your phone number. Remember, the first five people, I know I got Mike. I got Sam. A couple others came in. We put in, remember, 2300 bucks. That's the early bird special for the first five people. So if you come in hot, guys, come in hot. Let me tell you something. The heat that you see, you can see I'm kind of pumped up. This is what I bring to class every single day. This is what I bring into the chat room every single day. You're learning from the best. I may not be the best, most you know, best billionaire trader in the world, but I bring the heat every day. And that is one thing you can count on. I treat my students with love. I bring the heat, man. So you're never going to have a day where you don't have fun, you don't learn, and you don't have somebody invested to go in and bring it to you every single day. I'm 37 years old. I've been figuring out how to do this since 18. That's a lot of years. Man, I had hair like Bradley Cooper, man. He used to even go down almost to my shoulders. Woo! Think about that. Now I got none. It could be from day training. I don't know, but I'm going to show you how it doesn't become the same way. So put in your number, put in your phone number, first five people. And I want to see it because you know what? We do boot camps all the time, but these live events don't come. I want to see you in Dallas. I want to see you in Atlanta. I want to see you in Los Angeles. I want to see you in New York. Those live boot camps are small. They're fun. We go to a hotel. It's 12 hours a day of fun and then, you know, a little booze cruise at night. I think that's going to be really the kicker for you guys. And it's not just me that teaches those. My mentor, Paul, does it too. Guys, I really appreciate you guys coming in. They're all included. They are all included. So, you know, if you want to come in, and we don't do that every time. So you won't have, you know, the opportunity to come in the live event uh, just on its own. We package these together. If you're in class, you come in a live event, we make it happen. Good. I got you, Derek. I'll hit you up myself. Hey, you want to attend boot camp? It is. Guys, it's been a pleasure. It has been an honor. I love it. I've been having fun. Let's go do what we do. And like I said, I think I might be – the most passionate about the people that do this. I don't know if I'm the best, but ain't nobody got more energy than me. I outwork anybody. I told you, there's edges in life. That's mine. I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. God bless you and God bless.
the United States of America, the best country in the history of the world.